Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and here's another tutorial for Project Spark. I've been, in, been playing a few games recently that have got fishing mechanics in, and I thought, well, I haven't seen that in Project Spark. I wonder if I can make one. And this is the result. So you go up to here, it says fishing spot. Press B to start or quit, A to cast and strike. So I'm going to press B, and there's my fishing rod. And I'm going to press A, and that's going to throw out my fishing line with the hook and uh, when that goes um, flashes I've got to quickly press A to catch a fish. It's a randomized reaction. Any second now. Oh, there it is, and I've caught me a fish. And I can collect my fish. There we go, and it's at the top one, I've, I've collected fish, and then I can I can go again if I want. Catch another fish, and it's thrown it out. Okay, so let's have a look at the mechanic. It's a little bit of a complicated one. Um, there's a few little sort of work around things in here. Now, um, you may think, what is that fish doing up there? Um, that fish is out of the way. I was finding it, even though it's a templated object, for some reason it was interfering with the throw um, of uh, the fishing line. So I've popped it out here, out of the way. Um, it is uh, just a character fish. And if you go into its properties, physics, it's set to a phys physics type of fix and collider ball of off. And in its brain, there is uh, quite a few uh, lines which we'll go into in a minute. So let's uh, start down here. Now we have here uh, two black cubes. These are pos these are position cubes. They don't have any brains in. Um, I'm just using them as uh, an easy way of uh, having a position. Uh, this one in the water is is there so that um, my player will look out and face the right direction to where the fish are. And this is where I'm going to get my player to stand uh, so that he it looks right for using this fishing rod here. Now the fishing rod here is just a, a, a rod and a gear and a sort of handle thing. Um, you can design whatever sort of fishing rod you like. And at the top um, where the line is going to be attached and where the fish is going to end up when you've caught it, um, I've, I've put a sphere uh, which is invisible and that's going to act as our anchor for uh, all that activity. Okay, so here we have a logic cube. That's going to be our float. This logic cube is, in, is invisible and uh, inside it I've attached uh, our float design, which is some spheres. I think you can see that on a hook. Again, I've attached it to the inside of that cube. So let's have a look inside our sign, which is the, uh, the, the main part of the mechanic. Right, we're not fishing. Uh, we're going to display our text, fishing spot, plus me to quit, etc, etc, etc. And then uh, we can say when interacted, we're going to change that Boolean fishing to be true. And then we're going to uh, make sure that all of the fish and the floats from the previous, any previous fishing expedition has been destroyed. So we're starting again from scratch. And then we're going to create a float. So we're going to create that logic cube at the position of that logic cube. We're going to change the boolean in our player to fish fishing to be true. And we're going to make the player stand uh, at that stand position and as uh, because we're going to use our player a bit later on we're going to create an object variable called my leader to be the player when fishing is true uh, then we're going to change the fishing variable in that log bean to be true and all that does is, i'll show you the brain in a minute is it uh, changes the visibility of that um fishing rod so you can now see it uh then we're going to turn our player towards that uh, water logic cube so he's facing the right way and we're going to make the sign invisible otherwise the sign will be visible 
So here is, we've sent a, uh, this fishing boolean into this uh, rod. So now it's visible equals true and all of its attachments visible equals true. Otherwise visible equals false and it visible equals false. There we go. So this is invisible until you decide to go fishing and then you can see it. You don't have to do that. You can have this as a, as a fishing rod all set up ready and the player just comes and uses it. Uh, but I've had the uh, fishing rod uh, displayed uh, only when you uh, actually choose to fish. Right. Uh, now in the player, as we set our boolean to fishing to be true, we're going to change our camera to a first person camera. And when uh, the float is not in the water and we press A, we're going to throw the float high and strong. And that's going to create, um, that's going to throw our float out into the water. So else follow camera, so that's the same follow camera if you're not fishing, it's just a normal follow camera. So that's the mechanic for throwing out our, our fishing line. And that's in the player. Now the rest of it is in this float. Right, so first of all, once um, default density number variable equals density. So we're going to set whatever the density of our logic cube is. Now if we go into our logic cube properties, physics, I've set the density of this logic cube to be 0.5. That's so it will float and bob up and down in the water. We're then going to draw a line from the perimeter sphere on the top of our uh, rod to the float. And then we're going to say position Y less than 9.05 now 9.05 is the water level so if we go um let me go into world properties and we go down to water you can see the water level is 9.05 that's the the level so the because the the this logic cube is floating slightly under the surface of the water that means we can determine that it's in the water at this point. So if it's it, if it's less than 9.05, then that means it must be in the water. So we can set a boolean and say in water equals true. Now you may be asking, why don't I use uh, is swimming? Well, that doesn't work for inanimate non-character objects. So we have to set our own boolean. So here this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna use its Y position. Else in water equals false. When in the water and you press B, then we're going to uh, set our fishing boolean to false and the info sign fishing boolean to false. So this is, is if, if you've thrown out the um, uh, thrown out the float and then you press B to cancel. And this is what the cancellation thing does. So it turns all the uh, the booleans off, and then it destroys this float. Then we've got to make sure that the up variable on this logic cube is always the same as world up, so that it doesn't tumble because the it has a tendency instead of bobbing up and down like a float would, it tends to spin in the water. So this will stop it from spinning in the water. This is my debug code to display um, my random number um, above the, the hook so you can see that working. You might want that and then just ignore it or delete it uh, for, for when you get people to play. Now we've got a countdown timer, countdown timer of two on a loop and it's going to pick a random number between one and ten and make sure you put the as integer in there. If the random number equals one then we're going to set a boolean to say byte equals true. So you've got a 1 in 10 chance every 2 seconds of uh, of uh, a fish biting uh, your float. When bite is true, we're going to make that float a hologram and we're going to play a splashing noise and we're going to change our density to 2 and that will allow it to sink, it will make it sink quickly. 
Then we've got a countdown timer of 0.5 seconds. Now you can change this to be as difficult or as easy as you like. The speed of this countdown timer makes difference uh, how much of a reflex uh, you need from your player, how quickly they need to press that button uh, before it's too late. Uh, 0.5 seems to be uh, a decent decent one, but you, it's up to you. Experiment with it, see how uh, you might want to uh, change that. And you can also change that um, with a, a leveling system. So maybe it gets harder and harder the more that you fish. And that countdown timer gets a smaller and smaller number. It's up to you. Uh, then we're going to set bite equals false after that time. So um, when bite is true, and you press A. So while that bite is still true, so within that 0 0.5 seconds, uh, then catch equals true. When uh, not bite, then density equals def density. So as soon as that bite is, is made false again, then uh, the density of that logic cube go back uh, to 0 0.5 so that uh, it will float again to the top. Right, when our catch boolean is true, so this is, this is the mechanic for when you catch fish. For four seconds, we're going to move with flying towards that sphere with a minimum distance of zero. That'll get it right next to it. And then we're going to create a fish. We're going to create a tuna at that tuna position. And then we're going to uh, say that fish catch boolean is true. And then after four seconds, we're going to change our position so that it is the same as the primitive sphere. And then we're going to turn the fishing boolean off in the sign. And then uh, catch equals false. So we're finished. So in the, not in the sign, we're going to change off, change it in the um, player, not the sign, sorry. Change it in the player. We're going to change the boolean in the player to false. Then in our fish, up here, when catch is true, our position is going to be the same as the float on, on the bottom side. We're going to make sure his forward facing vector is the world up so that the, the fish is pointing up in the air and when visible and you detect uh, the player we're going to highlight yellow and we're going to uh, say when you pr press B you're going to pick it up now you would think um, I would just be able to use the ordinary interact for this it doesn't work because the fish isn't in front of the player he it is up in the air it's in, it's it's higher than than the player so um he can't pick it up so i've had to do this instead so this is a this is a way of creating an interact without um it being in front of the player so uh we're then going to change the woodland peasants uh fish number by one we're going to send say the info signs fishing boolean is now false and we're going to destroy the float. So there we go. There's our fish mechanic. And that's it. That is the fishing mechanic that I've created. Have a go at that. See how that works out for you. It is a little complicated, I know. Be careful with some of the uh, some of those else statements. Get them in the right places. And there you go. Well, thanks for watching. Hope that's useful. And keep sparking.